okay guys uh, i hope you have uh, copied this uh, seventh point now we will move on to exceptions and exemptions discussions sir now guys mm, okay come to the first one sir we are doing mandatory exceptions this means an entity is not required to do any retrospective effect first one is estimates so they have explained quite a bit they have made a chart and all i would like to keep this absolutely simple um, it is like this sir i'll make you write later on timing listen we will uh, jot down the notes later on timing listen sir. guys suppose this is the date of transition let's say 1418 this is date of transition this is comparative first year this is actually this is the first time we are preparing in this match on this date earlier when you prepared a balance sheet okay example okay, sir you created a provision provision obviously involves an estimate right so let's say the amount of provision has been created at 50000 we all know provision is by default an estimate and subsequently based on subsequent tax and all provision amounts may be increased or decreased also so what happened is subsequently somewhere over here the provision amount has been revised to 75000 so based on 1418 information 50000 ka provision was correct which we made when we were preparing under as now in 1920 based on more facts and circumstances we feel that 50000 provision is inadequate we have to create 75000 provision so we will increase the provision definitely provision has to be increased by 25000 when you have to increase the provision in the year in which you got extra information which is 2019 1920 but when you are in 2019 20 and preparing financial statements as per indias even 18 19 you know that you have to restate under indias you also know that you have to prepare a opening balance sheet also as per indias so technically you are standing here you are preparing financial statements of this period this period under indias this period you are comparative purpose you are preparing under indias here date of transition ka balance sheet also you are preparing as per indias see this balance sheet on 1418 is getting prepared under indias correct but this is not happening on 1418 no when you are standing on 1418 at that time you are under as you got covered under india subsequently only so you may be standing here and you are preparing this date ka balance sheet as per indias but by this date you already know that the estimate of the provision is not 50000 it is 75000 now you may feel that see when i was standing on 1418 and i prepared balance sheet on 1418 or 31st march 18 provision of 50000 was correct but when i am standing as on today i feel that the latest value of the provision is 75000 okay so when you go back here when you stand here and prepare a balance sheet of this date the question is sir in this new balance sheet as per indias as balance sheet 50000 is there indias balance sheet which is getting prepared with the date of 1418 in that should i keep 50000 or should i keep 75000 the standard says do not revise any estimates based on hindsight that means see now it, it, it is like we are already into future now and we are preparing a back dated balance sheet as per indias when you are already into future you might know some extra information subsequent developments and all all that changes in the estimates do not bring it into transition date balance sheet because based on the facts and circumstances on this date okay at the time 50000 uh, estimate was correct estimate only subsequent changes ki you realize it that no no it should be 75 so incremental 25000 wala estimate should be recognized subsequently but it should not be booked on this date just because you are standing in 1920 and preparing 1418 ka balance sheet does not give a license to incorporate all the changes which are happening here on this date balance sheet you can change this estimate of provision only if this provision ka amount or the estimate was originally an error until and unless this is an error you are not supposed to change it in other words in a simple way whatever estimates 
whatever estimates were prepared on 30 uh, with which 31st march 18 ka balance sheet was there 1418 ka balance sheet also must be prepared based on the same estimates you are not supposed to change any estimates at all unless and until the estimate itself is in error is a wrong estimate or all the facts were there but you could not consider them by mistake some amount or classification change then you can go and change in if there is no error then you are not supposed to revise this i hope you are able to understand what i am trying to trying to on this there is no question as such but just like that. you are standing in the year 1920 but you are preparing 1418 balance sheet as per indias it, it, it's kind of it's, it's a it's a kind of a backdated balance sheet no when we are prepare backdated backdated balance sheet some of the estimates what you made those estimates ka correct figures you might know no but you are not supposed to incorporate them on that date because you are still preparing a balance sheet on that date which should contain the estimates and judgments which were prevalent on 1418 not subsequently that's the only reason there so an entity's estimates in accordance with indias at the date of transition to indias shall be consistent with the estimates made for the same date in accordance with the previous gap unless there is objective evidence that those estimates were in Error. So until and unless you prove me that there is an error in the original uh, balance sheet itself, you are not supposed to revise any of the estimates which are prepared in the original balance sheet as per AS. So AS law, whatever estimates were there, India's balance sheet law, the same estimates must be used. That's it, sir. That is one mandatory exception. So this we will write down notes later on. The chart and all you can ignore. Second one, derecognition of assets and liabilities. Now see, the recognition of financial assets and liabilities means, for example, in the old accounting standards when you are following before India has, you might have derecognized any financial asset or financial liability. But as per India has, such a derecognition should not have been made. Now the question is, what if I ask you to apply India's retrospectively? What you have to do? Whatever you have derecognized under AS, but which should not be derecognized under India has. what you have to do now uh, ideal thinking says uh, what is there sir now whatever we removed assets financial asset or financial liability earlier and transition it again we will recreate correct no that's a, that the, that's a first thought will get the standard says don't do that don't do that if there is any financial asset or financial liability you have derecognized under accounting standard but under india such derecognition should not have been made so should i recreate such financial asset financial uh, liability right now the standard says do not do that ignore it from here after anyway you will apply the new standard uh, sorry india is one not in here after anyway but whatever wrong derecognitions you have made in the past in the old gap do not recreate or reverse them do not do that a simple example for this would be they have given a securitization example i'll give you a easy example suppose um, your entity has a bill receivable this bill receivable you have discounted with a bank bank gave you some amount and all now now as per indias 109 if you remember our discussions on derecognition principle you are not supposed to derecognize a financial asset until and unless all the risk and rewards are transferred to the other party but in the case of a bill receivable discounting transaction risk and rewards are not yet transferred to the bank because if the debtor does not pay to the bank we have to pay that means what risk is still lying with us only no So, as per India's one not nine, we are not supposed to recognize. Sorry, we are not supposed to derecognize bills receivable. But as per b- b- before one one zero nine, all your IPCC, what you used to do, the moment we discount the bills receivable, you used to remove bills receivable and recognize bank account debit, discount account debit, two bills receivable. So, bills receivable used to be derecognized. Now, on the transition date, if there is any such bills receivable with the bank which is not appearing in your balance sheet because you eliminated it already. should not be recognized by applying indias there so you have to apply de recognition principles and all only prospectively but not retrospectively so that is this point because is on this also there are no questions sir since it's easy to understand have covered sir this point i'm skipping sir on this there are no questions if you want you can go through it you will understand after but before you read this once go through hedge accounting principles and then read easy only it's not very tough I'm just not uh, covering that because there are no applications of that. Then 
NCA wala point. Okay. What this standard has done is it has given you three principles. See, NCA is part of India's 110, which is consolidation standard. This standard, this India's 101 standard, what it says is India's 110 also normally every India has to be applied retrospectively. You know, we are discussing exceptions for that. Three points we are going to discuss now. These three points do not apply retrospectively. Apply only prospectively. Okay. Now, what are these three points? You remember uh, while doing consolidation chapter, when a parent sells some shares in subsidiary, see, I get control on subsidiary by having an investment in subsidiary, right? So, some of the investment I sold. When I sold the investment, what will happen? There are two cases. One, sale of investment in subsidiary without loss in control. Means I was having seventy percent. I sold shares. Now it becomes sixty percent. So that entity is still my subsidiary only. Only thing is, I don't have control. Correct. This is one type of discussion. There is another one. I was having seventy percent shares. I sold forty-five percent shares. Now I am having only twenty-five percent. It is no more my subsidiary. Control is lost. In that case, you have to uh, write an entry in such a way that entire consolidation effect has to be recognized. The two points I told you: sale of shares in subsidiary, resulting into loss of control. Resulting into sorry, not resulting into loss of control. These two accounting and all we have discussed already. These two accountings should be done only prospectively. That means whatever India's one ten principles we studied in case of sale of shares and subsidiary, if that happens in our entity, in AS what accounting has been done, keep it like that. Hereafter, if something happens, then you apply India's one ten. Whatever already is accounted under. Old accounting standards. Let it be. Don't touch that. These are two points. There is one more case. If you remember, while doing consolidation chapter, see, uh, post acquisition uh, profits or losses of the subsidiary will be allocated some share to parent, some share to uh, non-controlling interest. Correct. If you remember, one sum we did in consolidation where that subsidiary fellow was making losses. When that fellow is making losses. Uh, our share of loss will be allocated to us, and NCA's share of loss will be allocated to NCA. Correct. So because of that, what happens is, if the loss, if the subsidiary continuously starts making losses, then the amount of loss that goes to NCA also increases year after year, year after year, year after year. Is it possible that NCA can become negative or not? Yes, we have done one sum where NCA is negative also. So India's one ten says that. India's one ten says that after allocating profits of subsidiary to NCA, if NCA becomes negative, let it become negative. It's okay, no problem. But as per accounting standard AS, I am talking not India's AS AS twenty one, which deals with consolidation. It says if after allocating losses, if NCA becomes negative, don't show it as negative. Make NCA zero, but don't make it negative. Unless those minority shareholders have contracted to pay some amount to the subsidiary in the event of losses, until unless such a provision is there, you are not supposed to show NCA as a negative, because you must in a broad view, if you see NCA negative in the balance sheet is as good as you are showing NCA as an asset. That means you are showing as if we can recover something from the NCA. But AS twenty one does not permit that unless we have a contractual right to recover some money from NCA. So, as per AS twenty one, majority of cases law, wherever NCA was becoming negative, we used to only show zero. But in India's one ten, it is not like that. If NCA becomes negative, let it become negative. It's a reporting adjustment. Let it be there. Show negative only in your consolidated financial statements. Okay. Now we are discussing India's one ten. I was following AS since so many years. From here, after I have to apply NDS. Imagine, I have some subsidiaries, loss-making subsidiaries, and those loss-making subsidiaries, so NCA in my balance sheet is appearing at zero. So why is it appearing zero? Actually, it should have been appearing at negative, but since I cannot show negative, I apply. I am showing them at zero, applying my old AS twenty. Now I migrated to NDS now. So NDS one ten says. Are nothing doing? Go and allocate losses. Let them uh, appear at negative. And what India is one zero one says is hereafter. From hereafter, you apply India's one ten prospectively. 
in the past whatever has happened let it be so in my consolidated balance sheet if i have a nca with zero actually that should have been negative but i'm showing it zero then show zero only don't go back and apply india's 110 with a retrospective so let me summarize again there are three points here one subsidiary loss making entity because of which nca becoming negative is a discussion accounting matter next sale of shares in subsidiary but control is still uh, not lost third one sale of shares in subsidiary control is lost in the respect of these three items india's 110 lo clear accounting guidance is that we already did some while doing consolidation chapter such accounting you have to do only prospectively once you migrate to nds you are not supposed to do it retrospectively okay let's read this a first time adopter shall apply the following requirements of indian in india's 110 prospectively from the date of transition here after after transition date onwards you apply not before sir before date of transition sir my nca became negative sir but i made it zero sir let's show zero only don't don't touch that don't rectify that sir before date of transition i sold shares in subsidiary but i did a different treatment doesn't matter leave it like that here after follow indians want so these are the three points sir total comprehensive income is attributed to the owners of the parent and to the nca even if it is even if this results in nca having a deficit balance sir that is one point accounting for change in parents ownership interest in subsidiary that do not result in loss of control accounting for loss of control over subsidiary so e three cases lo only prospective effect there is one exception to this rule now what is the meaning of exception to exception means what the prospective effect has to be given means the above point will not apply in one case what is that one case i will tell you later on okay so time being keep this uh, exception aside we will discuss this later on so this is same question sir based on what we have discussed now i can go through that okay so we have discussed till now three points one is estimates one is dire recognition so uh, hedge account as you skip it nca next one is classification and measurement of financial assets and financial liabilities now you see so very important one easy one sir uh, in india's 109 standard when you have when you have any financial asset or financial liability you know the accounting models you know acm is there fptpl is there ftoc is there on the date of initial recognition you have to determine which method is to be applicable and accordingly you will start accounting isn't it that's what we learnt in india's 109 but in my as zamana there was no india's 109 and all but of course the loans given would be there loans taken would be there all financial asset financial liabilities will be there standard and not there but transactions were there now today is a date of transition what the standard says is how that financial asset or financial liability will be accounted normally is to be determined on the date of initial recognition but the standard says don't do that much of over action stand today on the date of transition stand today on the date of transition today you have so many financial assets financial liabilities no now you decide whether acm is applicable or fptpl is applicable or ftoc is applicable and accordingly start doing accounting for that do not there is no need for you to go back dig on the date of initial recognition what were the information we were having at that time what is the objective of holding my financial asset so therefore i should apply acm or ftoc no transition date you take it as a starting point and today onwards you discuss from as on standing as on today you decide on the transition date india's 109 contains principles for classification of financial asset at acm ftoc or ftpl such a classification depends on assessment of features of financial asset on the date of initial recognition obviously india's 101 provides an exception to this general principles by requiring that such an assessment should be done on the date of transition so i purchased a financial asset 4 years back okay so you need not go back 4 years and see on that date what was my business model what was the ccft test on that date no not required 
today stand today on the transition date and now you ask yourself what is your bm test sppa test and then decide acmi ftoc ftpl standing today you should decide okay so this is one point from here you do india's 109 requires measurement of amortized cost of financial asset or financial liability using eir this for some case of financial assets acm acm, ACM will be applicable financial asset and financial liability as an exception to this general me measurement principle india's 101 provides that if it is impracticable for an entity to apply retrospectively the effective interest method in india's 109 the fair value of the financial asset or financial liability at the rate of transition to india's shall be the new gross carrying amount of the financial asset or the new amortized cost of that financial liability at the rate of transition to india's so what it says is suppose You 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 on the transition date you did you decided that for a particular financial asset ACM method has to be applied, correct? If ACM method has to be applied, you must know the fair value when initial recognition date fair value you should know. Some cases lo market interest rate and all you should know EIR you must calculate and all. Okay, so if all that information obtaining with a back date retrospectively is not possible, what you do is stand it today, stand today. measure this asset at fair value on the date of transition and here onwards work out an eir and solve so you need not do a retrospective effect of that once again i'll summarize two principles first principle says whether acm is applicable fetpl is applicable fetoc is applicable is something which you should decide on initial recognition but there is an exception you will decide now on the date of transition because you are migrating from as to indias first point second point if acm has to be applied eir and all ideally has to be computed from the original date to the end date but as if that is impracticable for you then the fair value of the financial asset or financial liability at the date of transition shall be the new gross carrying amount or amortized cost method sorry or new amortized cost of financial liability so what is he is saying is fair value it as on today and that fair value only you treat it as starting point sir fair value of a loan how to do sir what is there sir future cash flows will be there if it is an asset inflows will be there liability the outflows will be there market interest rate will be there applicable for that asset or liability discount all such cash flows you will get one present value that present value only will become the fair value of that financial asset or financial liability our discounting rate only will become your eir okay so this is one very important one easy one impairment if you want you can go through it i am not discussing sir easy on that's very easy there's nothing in that embedded derivatives also same point sir embedded derivatives in india's 109 what we discuss be there is a host contract a host contract lo derivative element is there what india's 109 told us is on the date of initial recognition only you must separate this derivative element from the host contract and this derivative element what you have separated that must be accounted as derivative separately this host contract will be accounted using other principles of india's 109 depending on whether that host contract is a financial asset financial liability or a contract to buy a buy or sell a non financial asset at a future date okay so i'm not going to that anyway now what is the exemption there the exemption is under as previous gap There was nothing called as India's one zero nine, so embedded derivative accounting was not there. So on the date of initial recognition, split would not have happened. The standard says nothing to worry. You need not go back to initial recognition date, split it and come back to today and present balance sheet. Not required. Split it as on today. On the transition date, you have some host contracts which are having derivative element. See, see them, and split it on the date of transition. from here onwards you do your india's 101 accounting there is no need to do a retrospective accounting for embedded derivatives but anyway on that there are no questions and all so it doesn't make much of sense for us to discuss that so guys after embedded derivatives the next important one is government loan okay i'll quickly tell you this in grand standard also you might have covered this when you take a loan from a government at a concessional interest rate or a interest free loan from a government when you take like that definitely there will be some grant component and some loan component we discussed in india's 20 as well 
no we will separate it we will split it you apply market interest rate you discount all the cash flows uh, the present value portion you will call it as the fair value of the loan the excess amount what you received over and above that from the government you call it as a grant a grant usually will be accounted as a deferred income and all we studied that in india's 20 now this sort of accounting is there where india's 20 lo there what is government grant standard under normal accounting standards as 12 you very 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 clearly you know that in as 12 there is no such accounting only so in the past in the past if i have received any loan from the government then how i would have accounted it i would have accounted it uh, normally i would have called it as a liability or if it is not repayable at all i would have parked it under equity but i never would have done a split accounting and all like how india is 20 is telling like that i would not have done never in the past sir now what should i do sir on the transition data suppose i have a concessional rate loan taken from the government appearing in my balance what should i do with this the standard says do not do any retrospective effect and do not split you need not identify the amount of government grant benefit and all do not do that you have a loan in your balance sheet let it be there like that you are not going to split it into how much is the real loan had i applied acm how much is the real uh, government grant amount in the government grant component in that you need not split so whatever india's 20 requirements are there that you need not do so then what should i do what you do is you have a loan okay you might have to pay some amounts to the government in the future in the form of interest and all so future cash flows you see today your book balance uh, carrying amount you see map that work out in year and apply acm on that hereafter that's it you will apply acm on the carrying amount of the government loan as it is you are not going to split it and all so once again i'm telling you this is your date of transition in your balance sheet you have a government loan government loan in sense you understand it as a concessional interest rate loan ideal accounting treatment would have resulted into loan separately government grant separately had you applied india 20 from the very beginning today some amounts would have come like this okay but this standard says don't do all that over action standing on the date of transaction the sorry, date of transition whatever government loan amount is there let it be there like that don't touch that don't touch that and in future whatever cash flows you have to pay map that amount and this amount work out an eir here onwards apply acm prospectively you are not supposed to identify the grant component for this one exception is there that exception is suppose this is your date of transition sir 1418 you received a government loan on 1450 three years back government loan is 30 lakhs you have some 10 years to repay concession interest rate loan. On 1415, had you split it, had you split it into loan and equity portion, loan portion would have been 22, equity portion would have been, uh, grant portion would have been 8 lakh. Had you done this. And according to India's 20, you will be applying ACM on this. This is deferred income, some portion would have gone to PNL account slowly, slowly. That you know as per India's 20. But you must understand, this is a period where i was not following india s20 i was applying as12 so i did not split so in my balance sheet as on today loan is appearing at 30 lakhs now you come and tell me sir big deal sir 30 lakhs three years back i would have split it into two portions loan me the same accounting will apply our remaining eight lakhs with deferred income accounting of grant will apply i will split that sir on this date after splitting, I will apply ACM for 3 years. Today, loan will be appearing at some amount. Deferred income of some portion will go to PNL account. So, here some amount will come. I will accordingly restate like this. That means you are asking me to permit you to apply retrospective approach. The standard says, if you want to apply retrospective ac ac accounting for this, there is one condition. The condition is, Sir, tell me, think peacefully and answer. If you have to split this 30 lakhs into this 22 lakhs and 8 lakhs, which information do you need? 
what information do you need think correctly you need only one information that is what is the market interest rate for our entity to raise a loan on 1450 correct me so now what india is 101 says is you want to apply retrospective effect no apply provided provided the information required for splitting that 30 lakhs into two portions that information you should have obtained on 1450 only that means you you are not allowed to stand here and think about 3 years back what was the market interest rate and you should not go back and search on this date only if you had enough information with you how much to split and all how to split it in loan component and grant component then you can go back retrospectively and do it a simple example for this is suppose on the date when government gave me a uh, concessional interest rate loan i also borrowed money from sba on my own account without any government uh, benefits that loan interest rate is 12% but government gave loan to me only at 5% i have two loans taken at same time now when government gave me loan at 5% i know that if i borrow in the market i have to pay an interest of 12% any i know or not because i took another loan at or more or less the same time so i have enough information to split this government loan into real loan portion and grant portion such a type of data should be there with you if such data is there with you you can do a retrospective effect so how to do retrospective effect i just now showed you the 30 lakhs is the amount received then you all your future cash outflows discount using market interest rate you will get present value that is your liability remainder portion is grant portion on this liability if you apply acm for 3 years today some amount would have been there no i amount you will write here e deferred income some portion would have gone to p and l account remaining portion will be there that you bring it here now in your balance sheet as on today 30 lakhs is appearing or 30 lakhs and make it into two portions and show it like this only excess portion uh, or any shortfall in that will be adjusted through retained earnings as it showed here so general rule for government loan no retrospective effect no retrospective effect but if you have enough information relating to splitting on the date of when you obtained the loan then you can split and give a retrospective effect a first time adopter shall apply the requirements in 109 and india is 20 prospectively to government loans existing at the transition date to india and shall not recognize corresponding benefit of the government loan at below market rate of interest as a government grant so very clearly they told you not to split it this is the same example sir whatever i have given i told you 30 lakhs this fellow took 1 crore and ultimately after some 4 or 5 years you have to pay 1.25 crores so as on today go and work out ear and here after apply ac and look at this exception an entity may apply the requirements in india is 109 and india is 20 retrospectively to any government loan originated before the date of transition to india is provided that the information needed to do so had been obtained at the time of initial accounting for that loan so for splitting a loan into these two components all i need is market rate of interest if that information you obtained originally only then you can do a retrospective effect also sir these are mandatory exceptions sir you are not supposed to do retrospective effect at all okay of course like this exceptions are there one or two for this rule also and here after our optional exemptions so what we will do is we'll make a quick short notes on all these mandatory exceptions and then we'll discuss optional exceptions okay please put the heading sir in your notes in this first one the estimates 
followed by the entity as per as on the date of transition should be continued even if the first index balance sheet on date of transition change in estimates based on hindsight is not permitted now what is the meaning of uh, based on hindsight is sir take this sir uh, in the example of estimate what i gave when i was standing here i made 50000 but now i am standing here i know that the latest worth of provision is 75000 as on as on this date standing here but standing here i am preparing this date ka balance sheet again now as per ndas when i am preparing 1418 balance sheet i already know that in future the provision amount changed so can i go back and update no you cannot do that this is called as in hindsight no so that is not permitted unless there is an error okay. original estimate sir estimate changed no sir if estimate changed means it is error only no no what is error you should go to india's one, one uh, india's 8 and again uh, see what is the meaning of uh, error change in accounting estimate is definitely not an error that's what we have discussed error means without considering facts available or reasonably obtained or misinterpretation of facts so because of that something has happened misstatement or omission has happened then we call it as error not this one. so this is one uh, case second one de recognition principles of india is 109 that to be applied only prospectively for transactions on or on or after the date of transition so if you have de recognized anything before the transition date under as zamana which according to india you should not have de recognized you should not now recognize them on the transition date once de recognized gone even though by mistake you de recognize also so leave it so this is second case hedge accounting i asked you to skip non controlling interest the following the requirements of indias 110 
shall be only applied prospectively from date of transition which points are there sir which three points are one is allocation of loss to nca which made which is making them negative a point you have to make them negative from here after already last year a negative sir but we made it to zero sir that again we will restate it to negative no don't do that number one sale of shares in subsidiary without loss loss of control with loss of control e three cases allocation of subsidiaries losses to nc creating a deficit balance change in parents ownership in subsidiary without loss in control third one accounting for loss in control Sir, you told sale of shares in subsidiary. No, why don't you make us write like that only? Uh, you must know uh, after doing consolidation that I may lose control in the subsidiary even though I don't sell the shares. No, my stake in subsidiary, my percentage of holding in subsidiary may reduce even I don't sell the shares. How subsidiary issued shares to somebody else? Subsidiary in the past has issued options to somebody. Now that fellow has exercised that, that options because of that. Total shares in the subsidiary have increased, and as a result, the proportion of parent holding may decrease. No, and because of that, I may lose control. I may not lose control. But that's the reason writing the word sale is restricting only to one transaction. When I say loss in control or change in our ownership, that can be because of sale or without sale also. So to count. So as I told you, for this also an exception is there. That exception will tell you later on. That anyway on that there are no questions and all. Nothing to worry. If you want, you can um, leave one line or like that. You can update me too. Next one is uh, classification and measurement of financial asset and financial liability. for financial assets classification as acm or fptoc or fptp is to be done on the date of transition This is one point. Second point. For financial assets and financial liabilities, the ACM has to be applied. If it is impracticable to retrospectively apply ACM in determining where the entity. Can 
फिर पहन सकते फिनेंशियल एसेट और फिनेंशियल लाइबिलिटी ऑन डेट ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन एंड हियर आफ्टर See embedded derivatives has nothing to do, sir. I'm directly going to government for this. an entity has to apply principles of NDS 20 and NDS 109 prospectively it shall not recognize the corresponding benefit of lesser interest rate loan as government grant entity may do retrospective application if information required for such accounting was obtained at the time of initial accounting itself. So guys, if you have done with um, copying this, we will move on to optional exemptions. There are many in this, sir. We are hardly going to cover some six or seven items but that will be more than more than sufficient for your examination okay sir i'm moving further we'll discuss sir and then we'll come back and write down the notes so the first one is on business commerce it's important one but uh, unfortunately there are no questions on that except one or two small theory questions we'll cover this little later on first let's cover easy easy ones 
let's do the share based um, payment transaction first let me tell you the position then i will tell you what exception is available that is if you want sir as per old guidance note on share based payments under india sorry under accounting standards fair uh, option valuation should be done either under intrinsic value approach on the grand date or by applying fair value you remember that but as per india's 102 accounting of ease of and all has to be done only using fair value of the option on the grand date now in my company i applied let us say as per intrinsic value i have been accounting like that on the transition date i have some options which are appearing under the name of ease of outstanding in my balance sheet but that is about standing or sbp this or whatever you call that has been measured under intrinsic value and now i am migrating to indias uh, indias so i have to apply indias 102 general rule is what we have to do a retrospective retrospective effect ka meaning is what now in this case had i applied fair value accounting from the very beginning today what amount would have appeared against sbp reserve that amount should be there so definitely there will be a measurement difference right now that is the original principle suppose if you come and tell us that sir sir we cannot do this is very difficult for us to go and do retrospective effect then there is an optional exemption given to that optional exemption is we will ask you you are let's say you are having 100 options all these 100 options are they wasted You say no, sir. The hundred or some seventy are wasted. Thirty are not wasted. Thirty not wasted. The meaning is what in respect of the thirty, still some time is there for extracting benefit from the employees. The so wasting period is still there. Correct? No? For that thirty options, no exemption is given. For that thirty options, no exemption is given. You have to compulsorily apply India's one zero two. That means. Had I accounted these thirty options by applying India's one zero two from the very beginning, today what amount would have appeared in the balance sheet on transition date? I am only curious. Corresponding effect, of course, retained earnings will go. Okay, these were thirty options under unvested option. What about seventy options, which are vested? Since they are already vested, since they are already vested, option number one, don't do anything, leave it. That means what? no application of indias 102 now you say no 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 sir i want to do retrospective effect on this also okay do but if you have to do retrospective effect on this you must have disclosed the fair value of options relating to the 70 options on the grant date see once again i am telling you unvested options you don't have a choice you have to anyway do retrospective accounting for vested options since already vesting period is completed now Now what? That's the point of restating all that the standard says. Shall we leave it? Whatever you have done, keep like that. Don't do any restatement. That's option one. That's a nice option. You should ideally take it. Suppose you say, "Ah no, sir. On the first day only, I was having fair value of option, but I selected intrinsic value and I did accounting as per intrinsic value. But fair value also was there with us. We also we also disclosed such fair value publicly also. Uh, so therefore." If it's not a big deal for me to go back and restate it because I was having information. The same thing you can do. So, retrospective effect, if you want to do, you should have fair value of such options publicly disclosed. Otherwise, leave it like that. But for unvested options, compulsorily you have to do fair valuation, or that is India's one zero two application retrospectively. Let's read. A first-time adopter is encouraged but not required to apply India's 102 SBP to instruments that vested before date of transition to India's. Look at the language: encouraged but not required. That's all. That's all. Not required means uh, it's an exception, optional exemption. If you if you don't want to apply India's 102, don't apply. But for what, sir? That vested before the date of transition. However. First time adopter may apply India's 102 to equity instruments if it has disclosed publicly the fair value of those equity instruments determined at the measurement date. 
in relation to ease of measurement it is obviously the grand date that's the only date on which you measure the ease of it's encouraged to apply india's 102 to liabilities arising from share based payment transaction that was settled before the date of transition to india here he is talking about equity items this is a liability since what sar stock appreciation rights and all on that it is encouraged means not mandatory but ideally it is better if you apply india's 102 retrospectively so there is a question on that X Limited is the first time adopter of India. The date of transition is 1st April. It has given 200 options. Out of this, 75 has been vested. On November 30th, we are standing on 1 April 1 20 X1. November 30 20 X0. The last year only. So five months back only, they have already vested. The remaining 125 will vest on 30 November 20 X1. That is after the transition date. What are the options available to X Limited on the date of transition? Okay. Think, sir. Total two hundred options. Seventy-five already vested. For seventy-five vested options, choice number one: don't do anything. Choice number two: do a retrospective effect accounting as per India's one two one zero two, provided you have disclosed a fair value of such equity instruments publicly. Okay. In relation to one twenty-five options, you don't have a choice. You have to compulsorily apply India's one zero two retrospective. So 75 options get two options sir. to apply 102, not to apply 102. For 125 options, will need to account the same as per this concept. So this is for SBP. Come to next concept sir. Deemed cost for PPE, intangible assets, and ROU assets. See, sir. Last thirty years, I am following is, I am having lot of PPEs, intangible assets, and all in my balance sheet, which are measured using accounting standards, AS ten and all. I have applied. Today, I am jumping to Indians. Now, applying Indians rules, primary rule is what general rule to give retrospective effect. Now, what is retrospective effect here means, had I applied India sixteen from the very beginning. Today, what what amounts would have appeared for PP intangible assets and all? Record that in the six or in the thirty eight, whatever stands is it? So that is option number one. That option is always there. Option two, sir, if you say, ah, no, sir, that is very very difficult for us, so we cannot do that. Okay, then there is option two. Option two, fair value these assets on the transition date. On the transition date, fair value. Once you fair value, see. In AS, what what mistakes you have done and all, I do not know. Once you fair value, it is like you taking a dip in Ganga. All your sins are washed away right now. Here after normally go and apply India. Select whatever cost model is applicable you want or revaluation model you want to select any method. So this fair valuation whatever you are doing today, that I will accept. Number two, third one, third option is whatever carrying amount was there under AS. That amount, as it is, we will accept. Whatever carrying amount you are having under accounting standards, that carrying amount, as it is, we will accept as a starting point. So, in that, I applied AS principles. So, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. This is a very, very huge relief. In fact, given if you see, this is India's one zero one corresponding IFRS is IFRS one. IFRS one contains only two points. Either do retrospective effect of India sixteen, India thirty eight, or do fair valuation the transition date. Only two options they give. But India's one zero one is very friendly. It, it gave one more extra option. What is that? Carrying amount, whatever is your net book value of these assets under AS, as it is, you bring it into India's uh, India's num same numbers, no problem. So this is one extra uh, relief which India's one zero one has provided. So one is retrospective effect, sir. One is fair value on the date of transition. One is previous gap carrying amount. The other one is previous gap revaluation. Previous gap revaluation come meaning is suppose suppose in the old AS you are following revaluation model, okay. Last revaluation, whatever you have done, latest revaluation, our revaluation amount, I will take it as a starting point. 
because revaluation even as per as also you have to do only a fair value so that number also is acceptable of course only when it is uh, nearly close to the fair value or cost plus depreciation on the transition rate so total all in all total four options are there sir one is go and give a retrospective effect number two do fair valuation on the transition rate number three if you have followed revaluation model under previous gap a revalued amount we will accept provided that revalued amount is near to the fair value today or cost less depreciation today okay number three number four previous gap law whatever carrying amount is there that carrying amount as it is we will accept so total four choices are there when i originally discussed this with you today i told only three options so I, i did not talk about previous gap revaluation the reason for that is the heading you see deemed cost for pp intangible assets and all if you go and see accounting standards revaluation is something that is allowed only for pp intangible assets as 26 does not permit any revaluation investment properties ki revaluation not there revaluation permitted only for pp so that's the reason our revaluation wala point i did not tick to get up there because we had common discussion anyway if you have to talk for all the group then there are three options sir what are the options apply india 600 retrospectively or do a fair valuation on the transition date or whatever carrying amount is there under as bring it as it is into india three options are there if you have revalued assets under previous as also then a revaluation amount can be accepted so total four choices sir okay now coming to investment property investment properties have to be carried only at cost under old as 13 also and also under uh, um, india's 40 also you have to carry them only at cost therefore the option of availing fair value as a deemed cost is not available for first time adopters so whatever cost plus depreciation is there that as it is you have to bring because in as 13 which covers investments uh, in there also investment property is it must be measured only at cost the cost is depreciation so whatever book value was there under as as it is bring it on here you are not supposed to do any fair valuation at all for that so in three options four options whatever i am talking that's not available for investment property investment property has to be measured only at cost less depreciation okay eighth question is an interesting question and of course not likely for examination but i'll just discuss it sir i am ex limited i am parent i have a subsidiary y limited ex limited migrated to india of course y limited also have to migrate to india no? because it's a subsidiary now in the course of migration what ex limited decided is they will apply india 16 retrospectively for all their ppa it's fantastic what y limited did is no no while making the transition we will take the old carrying amounts as opening amounts whatever carrying amounts were there in the uh, old as uh, books that as it is we will bring it as a starting point under indias so x limited the parent selected one option y limited selected another option is it okay first of all of course it is okay of course it is okay any choice companies can make so x limited in their financial statements had selected one option of transition Y Limited in their financial statements have selected one model of transition. Fantastic. Now, issue obviously is not in their separate financial statements. Separate financial statements are concerned. Fantastic. When X Limited prepares consolidated financial statements, now can we do consolidation as it is? If you think peacefully, you will get your answer. Because consolidated financial statements are prepared as if this parent and subsidiary is a single entity. if this group entirely is a single entity then how financial statements will appear like that you have to prepare so how can an entity take two options it cannot take so from the group point of view you should have only one option that is nothing but the option which the parent is following but from individual uh, stand points parent can take one option subsidiary can take one option this question is based on that we'll if you want i'll make you write that in the notes as well later it will not be permissible to use different basis for arriving at the deemed cost 
this is a very stupid question sir he is asking when when, when we say deemed cost uh, you can carry forward the amount as it is he is asking see in, the, in your as you will have original cost minus accumulated depreciation then you will get the net carrying amount when i say as amount will be carried forward to indias means which amount will be carry forward sir which amount will be coming obviously the net amount only will be coming you know original cost 100 lakhs accumulated depreciation 60 lakhs net book value 40 lakhs so if you are preparing fresh books now under indias under indias pp should be started with not with 100 lakhs you have to start with 40 lakhs obviously so 40 lakhs will be carried forward not 100 lakhs so that is that so these are all basic level questions you can go through it okay so we have covered two items in optional exemption sir one is uh, written to share based payments the other one is related to deemed cost of uh, pp ita and uh, investment properties next these two also we can cover they are easier to cumulative translation difference now you see as 11 law so when in the case of non integral operations and all we used to create an fctr like how india is 21 says uh, fctr creation like that fctr was there even under uh, as 11 also that fctr whatever balance is there i fctr you can make it to zero hereafter you recognize hereafter apply india is 21 and whatever uh, fluctuations are there park it under fctr as required by india is 21 past fctr which you have created using as 11 that sorry not as 11 yeah sorry as 11 creating as 11 that past fctr you can make it zero start fresh from today and no sir i will apply india's 21 retrospectively of course you can do that this is only optional exception so this is one point second point long term foreign currency monetary terms uh, okay this after this i uh, will close for today's session we will continue in the next video anyway listen long term foreign currency monetary item means if you remember while discussing india's 21 also i told you this in as 11 there was something called as paragraph 46 and paragraph 46 a you are having suppose you took a long term loan okay for purchasing a depreciable asset and since this long term foreign currency loan is there you have that's a monetary item you have to restate it or remeasure it on every balance sheet date whenever you remeasure a financial item the resulting exchange gain or loss should ideally go to pr but in as 11 they gave you some alternative treatments you can adjust it against the cost of depreciable asset if you get a loss instead of debiting to p and l you can debit that loss to the cost of the asset and gain is the not to credit p and l but to reduce it from the cost of the asset this is one provision if you say sir no sir i have a long term foreign currency monetary item but that's not related to depreciable asset like i gave a foreign currency loan to somebody long term so this foreign currency loan given is also a long term foreign currency monetary item there is no depreciable asset involved and i don't want to take it to prl account is there any recourse for me for that para 46 46 say what did they say create a temporary account called as foreign currency monetary item translation difference account and you keep on parking exchange gains exchange losses into this separate account and this will be amortized to p and l over life of monetary item suppose the loan what you have given is for five years so if cmi td low whatever balance is there that will be amortized over a period of five years but if you remember i told you these are against the basic core principles of counting losses how can you capitalize or how can you defer from coming to peer in india they made this in as 11 but the core principle is or correct principle is everything should go to pr this is what even india 21 says and india 21 does not contain anything like paragraph 46 46 corresponding principles are not there now look at this case i am a limited I have a foreign currency loan, uh, it's a foreign currency loan given. On this exchange fluctuations uh, happen every year. These exchange fluctuations, I was parking it under FCMI TDA, applying paragraph 46, 46A. Now suddenly, NDS got applied to me. So I'm standing on the transition date. In my balance sheet, loan is there, 
FCMI TD account is there. Okay. Now what should I do? General principle. Apply India S21 retrospectively. The normal principle. If I apply India S21 retrospectively, what will happen? There is no question of deferring any gains or losses. No. You have to throw off everything into PRL. That should happen. Now, what India S101 says is, if you want to apply India S21 retrospectively, then whatever pending ac accumulated exchange gains or losses in that FCMI, TDA and all, clear all that, throw it off into PRL. That is one option. Retrospective op option is anyway there. The exemption what we are giving now is, in respect of this particular loan, which is outstanding on the transition date, in respect of this monetary item, you can continue to apply this accounting. This accounting you can continue to apply even under the regime of NDS. Hereafter, you will follow NDS 21 for new monetary items. Hereafter, you take a loan. Hereafter, you give a loan. You have to compulsory apply NDS 21. But for existing long term monetary items, for which in the past you already applied 4646 ACA treatment, if you want, you can continue the treatment. So, see how many ifs are there. So, if I am an entity having a long term foreign currency monetary item, loan given, loan taken, receivable, payable, foreign currency, in past I should have applied this. Uh, 46, 46 A wala choice I, I should have taken under AS11. AS11 also gave you PRL choice. Okay, so if you take PRL choice in the past, now also you have to do that only as per India's 21. You don't get an exemption. Exemption will be given for whom? Somebody who has been applying this uh, 46, 46 A principle in the past. If they want, they can continue to apply paragraph 46, 46 A principle even in future also for this particular monetary item for this loan taken or received for this receivable payable which are existing on the date of transition sir after date of transition if you took a new foreign currency monetary item loan you have taken on that you have to apply only India S21 for you 46 46A will not be applicable that's also as simple as that so to summarize it in one line it is like this if an entity has been applying paragraph 46 or 46 acre principles of AS11 in the past. Now they are migrating to India's one uh, India's. Then, if they want, they can continue to apply such principles in respect of that monetary item only. Hereafter, hereafter in the sense, after the date of transition, you have to compulsorily apply India's 21 for new monetary items. For existing monetary items, you can continue to apply that. Uh, Paragraph 46, 46, say well, treatment. That's it. Okay, we, I'll make you write all the points. We'll finish off these two or three questions. Why Limited is a first time adopter of Windows. The date of transition is April 1, 2021. On the date of transition, uh, there is a long term foreign currency monetary liability of rupees 60 crores. Okay, nice which is US $10 million converted at an exchange rate of um, the rupees, rupees 60, fine, doesn't matter. The accumulated exchange difference on the date of transition is nil since AS, sorry, since Y Limited was following AS11 notified under company's accounting standard rules 2006 and has not exercised the option provided in paragraph 46 or 46 a of as 11 stop here sir this fellow took a loan from a foreign bank or something and obviously he is applying as 11 but he did not select paragraph 46 46 a which means all the exchange gains and losses he was transferring it to prl in the past the company wants to avail the option under paragraph 46A of AS11 prospectively or retrospectively on the date of transition to NDS. So this fellow now got an idea. What idea he is getting is, all these days I transfer to PRL, okay. But hereafter I want to follow paragraph 46, 46A. The standard does not allow that. What standard allows is, if you are already following 46, 46A in the past, 
then i will allow you to continue that in future also only in respect of that monetary term you cannot change your option today and come to 46 46 year that is not possible either prospectively or retrospectively not possible if they want to avail prospectively cannot avail if they want to avail retrospectively cannot avail so this exemption is ava- you cannot freshly select 46 46a if you already have then you can continue that for already selecting if you have already selected that for any monetary item you can continue to apply that you cannot now come into 46 46a please go through the next one sir while you voted is in first time adopter of india is the date of transition is 1st april 2000 uh, x5 on 1st april 2000 x1 uh it obtained 7 years dollar 1 lakh loan okay took a loan some for his back it has been exercising the option provided in paragraph 46 46a of as7 and has been amortizing the exchange differences in respect of this loan over the balance period of such loan that's nothing but fcmi td on the date of transition the company wants to continue the same accounting policy with regard to amortizing exchange differences whether the company is permitted to do so of course yes, they can do that they can do that okay this also i'll cover and then we can close for the course sir investment in subsidiaries joint ventures and associates okay investment in subsidiary associate joint venture at what value they should be measured india is 27 already told you in the normal india is 27 what is that cost or fair value as per india is 109 but when you look into is subsidiary investment associate investment the separate separate accounting standards were not there we only had in as 13 where accounting principle depends on whether it's a current investment or a long term investment okay so you must be following as 13 in the past now we are coming to indias now so on the date of transition what should i do the standard gave you options like this cost determined in accordance with indias 27 means what whatever uh, cost is there measure at cost that is option number one option number two deemed cost what is deemed cost deemed cost means today you fair value on the transition date here onwards uh, apply india's uh, 27 or previous gap law whatever carrying amount is there as it is bring forth that's it that means overall how many options are there think cost or fair value on the transition date or previously whatever carrying amount is there as it is you bring this is something similar to what we did for pp and all where three options are there here also some three options are okay compound financial instruments is a good one sir nothing great in that but we will do that in fact this solution till last edition of study material the solution given there was wrong actually even in rtp also this question came the wrong solution now they have rectified it now it is okay this we will solve in the next video that's all sir remaining of the adjustments uh, we need not go through maybe joint venture related adjustment will go rest of it not required there are some good questions on this uh, which are exam range questions people are writing in november 2021 you can watch out for india's 101 a very 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 high chance of coming very high chance of coming so we got to write notes on option exemptions and finish up another two or three business combination is there compound financial instruments is there these two are done then questions questions are done in days one or so thank you guys we'll see you in the next video